If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and take a chance to solve the question before listening on. In order to calculate the magnetic flux through the shaded face of the cube, we would need to use, of course, the magnetic flux equation. So let's take a look at that. So here we have the magnetic flux symbol, and we see that it is equal to the magnetic field times the cross-sectional area of the loop, and then multiplied by the cosine of theta. And we'll see that theta is the angle between the magnetic field and a direction that's perpendicular to the plane of the loop. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But first, what we want to do is add magnetic field lines to the diagram. We were told that there is a magnetic field pointing in the positive x direction of 5 tesla. Another magnetic field exists in the positive y direction, whose magnitude is 4 tesla. And a third magnetic field exists in the positive z direction, whose magnitude is 3 tesla. So we're going to add those to the diagram. Don't forget that the positive y direction would be along this axis here. Positive x direction would be to the right, and the positive z direction would be sort of projecting out of the page towards us. So notice that we've added green vectors to represent the three magnetic field components in the x, y, and z direction. Next, we want to try to understand what we mean by this angle theta. And to do that, we're going to need to draw a line that is sometimes called the normal. So here it is. It is an imaginary line. It's not an actual physical structure present in the picture. Notice that it's passing through the center of the shaded face of the cube. We chose the shaded face because that's what the question is directing our attention to. And also notice that it is perpendicular to that shaded surface of the cube. We can even draw in a little right angle perhaps, although that might not be too clarifying. And when it comes time to figuring out the angles, we technically would have to think about three angles. We would have theta x, theta y, and theta z. If we first consider theta x, we just want to figure out what the angle is between this normal and the magnetic field line that's pointing along the x-axis. Hopefully we can see that that angle is indeed zero degrees. For the y-axis, the same idea. We want to figure out the angle between the normal line and the magnetic field that's projecting along the positive y-axis. And if we look carefully, that is indeed a 90 degree angle. So we can say that theta y is equal to 90 degrees. Theta z might be somewhat challenging to see. It does turn out to be 90, but maybe in order to see that, you can imagine that the normal line was kind of shifted downward just a little bit, almost as if it were resting on the x-axis. And if you think of it that way, you should be able to see that the angle between the magnetic field along the z-axis and then that normal line would indeed be a 90 degree angle. So theta z is also 90 degrees. Now we recall that the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. That's a fact probably learned in a trigonometry course. The cosine of 90 is equal to zero degrees. Well, that means that the magnetic field in the y direction will not contribute any flux, nor will the magnetic field in the z direction will contribute any magnetic flux. So the only magnetic flux that's going to occur is from the magnetic field that's projecting along the x-axis. So we really only have to consider the magnetic field along the x-axis. The other two, again, will produce fluxes of zero because of that 90 degree angle. And one more point before we plug into the formula. Since we're calculating the flux through the shaded face of the cube, we would need to know the area of that shaded face of the cube. Now, of course, that shaded face is just a square. And the area of a square is just the side length times the side length again. So really, the area is just going to become L squared. And so with that idea in mind, we can plug into the formula. Notice that we converted the L into meters. The question gave L in centimeters. And so, of course, to convert that into meters, we just take the decimal point and move it over once and then a second time and add a zero there. So we would have 0 0.025 meters, and that's what we've plugged in for L. And plugging this into the calculator, we can see that the magnetic flux through the shaded face of the cube will be 3.1 times 10 to the minus 3, and the unit of flux is Weber's. So that is indeed the correct answer to part A. Now for part B, it really turns out to be more of a conceptual point or a conceptual understanding rather than a calculation. But briefly, the idea is the following. We'll notice with this cube that any magnetic field line that enters the cube, let's say from the bottom here, will also exit from the surface on the opposite side. Same thing if a magnetic field line was coming into the cube from this direction, the same magnetic field would be coming out in that direction. 
And finally, if a magnetic field line was entering the cube from the front, another magnetic field line would necessarily be exiting from the back. So the point is, in short, that because of this fact, because that any magnetic field line that enters the cube will have a corresponding line that exits the cube, the overall magnetic flux through this cube will just be zero. So no calculation required. We can simply state that as a matter of fact. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you'd like to, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address displayed on the screen, and I will do my best to provide a video solution to it.